Hello, everyone. I am uh, Pauline Bianchi. I'm the Senior Vice President of Research and Programs with the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. And I'm really happy to see you all here. What, what a great turnout. Uh, so this is actually my fifth summit. Uh, the first time I've actually been on this side of it. Um, I've mostly been an attendee on kind of the industry side. And uh, without bias, I can still say this is really my favorite meeting. So um, my goal really is to introduce you all to the resources at the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. But my guess is if you all found yourself here, you certainly know uh, somewhat about, about the foundation. So hopefully I'll provide some new information and uh, tell you a little bit about what's been going on most recently. So I think, again, most of you know that the real goals around the foundation are to really mobilize people and resources. And ultimately, we're trying to find a cure for these diseases. And we're looking to support research and ultimately have people live longer and healthier lives. So we're going to talk a little bit about the educational programs that we have. Um, and I'll, we'll go through a little bit about the care center so you'll understand, uh, again, kind of more of the resources through the foundation. So in the center of all of this is something called the Care Center Network, and we will talk a little bit more about what that is. Um, I'm just thinking, I do have a mic here. I don't need to stand here, do I? OK, sorry. Thank you. Um, it's probably echoing with two of them. So we'll talk a little bit more about what these care centers are. But in general, we kind of have four areas that we focus in. So obviously, we're an advocacy group. So we're, our goals are to advocate even things around legislative work for right now, probably our most significant issue is around access to oxygen. I'm sure, again, many of you know that um, patients require a high flow oxygen. It's very difficult to obtain. So we're doing quite a bit of work with other organizations to try to make CMS really uh, be aware that this is a, a significant problem. Uh, we do a lot of things around education, not just patient and, uh, education, but also around healthcare providers. Um, so again, we have all kinds of resources on the web, which I'll share with you shortly. Uh, we create a lot of patient support materials. We have support groups. We have a patient communication center where you can call in or email in for, for resources. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the newer things that we're doing. And then kind of uh, on the other side, we're really very supportive of research. So we provide grants to junior investigators that have an interest in the science of moving you know, pulmonary fibrosis research forward. Um, then more recently, we've actually started working with some of our industry partners. Uh, not that you ever want to have pulmonary fibrosis, but right now there are probably 30 companies that are in development in various stages of uh, drugs for pulmonary fibrosis. So they're coming to us as the experts and hopefully the resource to help them with getting these therapies to, to, to patients quicker. So I'm curious, how many of you are involved in a, in a support group? Very good, that's awesome. I guess one thing that would be good for us to know too later is are you in a region where there isn't one and can we help you find where there are resources? Um, I, from what I see when I go and when I talk to people, they, they find this a really valuable uh, component of, of a resource through the foundation. So currently we have over 135 care, uh, pulmonary fibrosis support group centers, or groups, and we're in about 37 states. So if you're in a state that you don't think we have one would, and you want to be a, a volunteer, we'll give you all the tools that you need to set up a support group. Um, and then one thing we also have uh, is there are people, of course, that either due to uh, bad weather, they can't make it to a support group, they are geographically not close to one, or they're just too ill to travel. So on the third Thursday of the month, we provide a, a call-in for a support group, and that's led by one of the, the, the PFF members. And again, this varies with different topics. I think we will have these postcards actually available at our table. If not, um, again, I can direct you somewhere on the website. But we created this so people know that what time zone it is, or if you're, this is run on, at the time in Chicago, but if you're in Florida, you want to know what time it is. And so all the information is on there with the call in and the conference code number. Um, but I would again recommend, even if you want additional support more than your local support group, um, I think there's some really good topics and good speakers. So we talked, I mentioned a little bit about the Patient Communication Center. Has, has anyone called or emailed the Patient Communication Center? Okay, great. Uh, you know, so this is, this, we're responsive basically to healthcare providers, to patients, to caregivers, a lot of things around questions of where should I get care, um, 
I want more information about the new medication that I was prescribed. Can you tell me about clinical trials? Um, so we uh, send out materials free to anyone who asks for the materials, and we'll go through some of the things that are currently available. And um, so again, you, many people just want to call and talk. We've seen really a change where more people are calling versus emailing in, but you have basically two different options that you can choose. So this is probably one of the most requested uh, materials that we have. Does anyone have this? Good. Okay, so this is kind of a, uh, this is great to kind of talk to a group, not, not that I'm happy that you're newly diagnosed, but, but at least I can share with you some of these tools. So this is really a nice book. I think it's in four other languages other than English. If anyone needs it in Spanish, and I forget Russian, a couple of other languages. Um, but this is really, to me, all things nuts and bolts about pulmonary fibrosis. Very well written. Um, again, probably something that I would recommend that all of you have. Um, even just a way of, I think, explaining to your family members what, what this disease involves. So obviously oxygen is a big issue for many uh, patients with pulmonary fibrosis. So we, these are sort of short little kind of trifold pamphlets. And one of them is really what is oxygen? Why did your doctor prescribe this? Uh, and then one is really just around travel. If anyone has tried to get on a plane with oxygen, uh, it's, it's not an easy process. Uh, you know, it requires probably you contacting your doctor about a month in advance to kind of get all of that set up. So there's kind of information around that, around travel with oxygen. And then this is something that really came from some of my visits. I've gone out to these care centers, which we'll talk about shortly, and I was watching all these amazing nurses in the centers creating these tools of how to, you know, more than just the basics of oxygen, how do I clean my equipment? How many, uh, how many hours will my tank last? What is the issues around CMS right now, around coverage? So this, I think, is really well done. I'm very happy with how this came out. Um, so again, I, would, I believe we'll have a lot of these tools at, at the PFF table as well. And again, we can ship these out to anyone. They are all, these tools are downloadable on the web, but it's nice to me to have it kind of shipped in a more shiny, glossy format. So this, these are kind of other things that we have. One is just more of an overview of what is the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation? What, what do we do? What are our resources? Um, and then we really have started with some of these uh, fact sheets. So one of the criticisms that we've heard in the past is that everything, and you, you probably see this in the literature, everything's focused on IPF. But many people have hypersensitivity pneumonitis or they have autoimmune associated. So we've really created these one page fact sheets on things like hot tub lung and you know, bird fancier's lung and, and then also things even around some of the therapies, you know, a kind of a summary of the antifibrotics. Um, so there's various things. Right now, these are only downloadable, but we're actually, I think, in the process of thinking about having these in a printed version for those that may want that. So I would really encourage you as well. We, ha we have a, a webinar once a month, and they vary on different topics. They're, they're done live. Uh, you can actually go into a chat and ask a question, and there's a moderator who can answer, ask the questions of the, of the presenter. But all of these are archived, and there are topics, anything from nutrition to palliative care to lung transplant, or why should I participate in a, a, a support group? And they're very well done, and these are more comprehensive, again, about an hour in length. So we have PFF ambassadors, and I would encourage any of you that have an interest in kind of sharing your story or even as a caregiver. We do have a few healthcare professionals that also do this, but they can go to either educational events or uh, a PFF walk or any kind of event, and they really share some, I think, inspirational stories. And it's, I think it's nice to hear other people that are kind of going through the same thing that you are and have, I think, really a very positive message and some, I think, also just a lot of concrete kind of suggestions on how to manage some of the, the issues that you can have with pulmonary fibrosis. So we launched this just last year. Uh, so if you don't want to listen to a whole one hour webinar, I think these were very well done. They're actually YouTube videos. And they are, I would say again, somewhat either educational in nature. What is IPF versus UIP versus ILD? Um, to really, again, inspirational stories. So one of the stories you'll see, are, are we have a, a patient this year that is a co-chair of the summit, and that's the first time we've done that. So Dot De La Rosa is on a video. She's had a lung transplant, and when you meet her, you'll, you'll not forget she is just full of inspiration and 
uh, very motivating. So there's, there's a story about her. Uh, so currently we're working on something around a clinical trial video, which I'll tell you about that. But you can kind of see the different topics that we've done. But these are, again, just a few minutes probably in length. So something I think that most everybody is really interested in right now are clinical trials. And as I said, you don't want to have pulmonary fibrosis, but right now, uh, again, I've been in this field for a while in different capacities, and there's a lot of activity out there. So something that we heard from patients and caregivers is that they really wanted to know not just what is going on right now, but what does the future hold? I mean, it's nice to, I think, have hope that there are lots of things in development. So this is something, again, I know it's probably a little difficult, but you can go to our website, and there's some basic things that you can type in. So say, I'm only interested in a phase three trial, or I only want to, you know, I have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And so you, you would click on that, and then any of the trials that may potentially um, meet your characteristics would pop up. And then you would click on the trial, and it would give you more specific information about the company and about the actual trial. And then when you click on that, it will actually bring you to what we call the clinical trial finder. So this is another way you can go in and find out about trials. Um, but this will, uh, the goal is to directly have you have a contact with somebody at a center that you're not calling to a major inst academic institution and pushing one for this and two for that and then never really getting to anybody. The goal is to really have a contact that you could talk to directly about participation in a trial. So this is, again, another part, this clinical trial finder, where, again, you go in and you type in your basic, you type in your zip code, and then you say, I'm willing to travel 50 miles for a clinical trial, or I'm willing to travel, you know, 500 miles for a clinical trial. So anything, you know, that may potentially um, apply to you would pop up. There's some basic other demographics over there, kind of your gender and what type of trial you're interested in. And then, again, it will direct you to, hopefully, a direct contact at one of the participating clinical trial sites. So really exciting. We've heard some, from some of the centers that this has really driven activity uh, to their centers for participation. So I think one of the other things I, I briefly mentioned is, you know, the foundation really does feel that participating in clinical trials is an important component. And so we are, we talked about the YouTube video, so we just, actually I think you're going to see this on Saturday. You're gonna see the kind of the premiere of this video about why should I participate, actually Dr. Lee is in that video. Uh, why should I participate? What are the risks? What is a phase one trial versus a phase three trial? So um, we're really hoping that it's going to be informative and encourage people to participate. So this is something, too, relatively new. We're working with an organization called Responsum. And, you know, as people are very interested, obviously, in clinical trials, but they're also interested in what, what's, what's out there as far as, you know, publications. And for most people to go and look at a publication in the New England Journal of Medicine and read, you know, language that's all, you know, a lot of jargon around medical um, words, it's difficult. So this is an organization that basically, currently, I think there's about 500 um, uh, publications on there, they create really a kind of a short summary in a, in a more understandable way. And the, the, the part about this which is kind of interesting is say you're really interested in oxygen, you kind of keep looking at those um, articles, it starts to learn a little bit about what your interests are and it will start kind of proactively almost sending you new things. So, um, so this is pretty new for us, but I would encourage you to kind of get in and, and uh, see, see what you think. So uh, we just missed uh, Pulmonary Fibrosis Awareness Month, so it is in September. It's a, it's a huge event, obviously, for us. You know, one of our biggest efforts is around uh, awareness. So you can see, um, and actually you can see Dr. Nambiar in DOT there in the top, but people do go all out. You probably see people here with blue and purple hair, and I said, I, I go to the point, I, I paint my toenails blue, that's, that's I draw the line. I'm not, not, not dyeing my hair blue, but, um, but really it's a great, there's all kinds of activities um, walks, educational events, um, you know, people at their um, institutions have a fountain and they turn it blue, and some even large buildings in, across the U.S. have gone blue for PF. So we have a, we started with a walk, I'm not sure, I don't think this one is updated, but actually we started in Chicago, obviously where the foundation is based, and we expanded to uh, New York and Washington, D.C., and then this year just added Dallas, um, and it's just a great way, again, to bring the community together, increase awareness of the disease, and obviously, you know, we're, we're, you know, it's, we're hoping for um, contributions to be able to continue to drive all of the programs and things that we're doing forward. 
So if you want, we also do virtual walks. So if anyone has a group in your, in your city and you want to put something together, you know, we have people in the development team that can certainly help you with that. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the care center, which I talked about before. So, you know, we, these care centers are really centers that are supposed to, they have an expertise and experience in diagnosing and treating pulmonary fibrosis. And I think we've heard today, it's not easy. It's very challenging. And so, you know, we believe that it's important for you to try to have some evaluation at, at the centers if possible. Now, and I'll show you, I think, the map in a little bit, and you'll see that there may not be one next door to where, where you live. Um, but again, the, the, the idea, when I think it was talked about earlier about having this multidisciplinary team of putting everyone together and reviewing your case, um, and then we believe that we want these centers to also be heavily involved in research so that you can come, and if you have an interest, and you're, you're eligible to be able to participate in some of the trials. And we think it's important to educate the community, both community physicians as well as, you know, the lay public around the disease. So we actually, the foundation started in 2000, so we're about 20 years old. Uh, amazingly, we started with nine care centers in 2013. Uh, I came on, it was like 2017, we were at 45 and we added 15 more, and then just this year we added eight additional sites. So we have um, really expanded tremendously, and I would say, you know, all of the centers have some diversity, but in general they have met some requirements that we feel are important to become part of the care center network. So here's a map, if you guys are good with geography. There's, there are like several in Texas, and some of the dots are overlapping a little bit. I think there's two in Dallas, two in Houston, one in San Antonio. Um, but you know, our, our goal would be, of course, to have these dots all over the country. Uh, not, every con uh, not every state may have the resources or even the population to support a care center, but we do believe there's still some opportunity to probably expand beyond uh, the 68 centers that we have here. So here's a list, this, this is testing your eyes, if you can read any of those. So you can kind of look, uh, obviously again, this is available on our website. Uh, one of the things, again, that you can do if you're looking for care is you can actually just go in and um, search by state and see which care centers are available. Um, you now again, I think there's a lot of other, hopefully, institutions that will join this list. It's, it's not necessarily that the care is not great in some of these other areas, it's just maybe they haven't gone through the process of the actual designation to become a care center site. I think I'm okay. So almost done, I'm way ahead, they're just good. Um, so the other thing, you know, I, just curious for those of you that have been diagnosed is, I guess raise your hand if you had a difficult time with obtaining what you think is a correct diagnosis. Not as bad as I would have thought. Um, so you know, we've done a lot of survey work around the, the we call it the journey of the odyssey of uh, getting a diagnosis, and not uncommon for many people to be misdiagnosed with, first of all, other common pulmonary disorders such as COPD or asthma. Many people are put on inhalers, and you know it takes you know, it can take years for people to actually get a diagnosis of pulmonary fibrosis. Um, and you know we we hear a lot. Um, I, I was just uh, I just. Camped, I just hiked the Grand Canyon, uh, which was quite a feat, and I was with a physician, I won't, I won't say from uh, what center, but was a physician who was a hospitalist uh, at a major academic center, and she was really unaware of uh, pulmonary fibrosis being kind of an interstitial lung disease. So if this is at a major academic uh, institution, you can see that there's uh, still some gaps in knowledge around the disease, and, and I hear that from people all the time, is that they go to see their primary care, or even their community pulmonologist, and they're just not really very aware of the disease. So something that we've act, you know, very been active around is trying to increase awareness. So part of this started really at more of the patient level of, okay, and, and we've also worked with um, Three Legs Partners, which you'll hear about too, around not everything is a cough. Uh, and it's the idea that if you've been coughing for, you know, for four months and you're fatigued and you can't, you can no longer go to the mailbox and get your mail out, that maybe it is something more than just, you know, a, a common cold or COPD. And so there's kind of a list, a checkoff list that you could actually bring to your physician and, and not only increasing awareness that, for you about having a level of suspicion, but also having your physician start to think about that. 
uh, that maybe you do need, we talked about the high resolution CT, or you need to have some screening for other ways of ruling out pulmonary fibrosis. So this again started more at the patient level and then kind of the second uh, round of that really has been geared more to the community physician. Um, and even also things like uh, trying to work with nurse practitioners and pulmonary rehab, just trying to educate them around the disease. And uh, it's, you know, I just was in a session earlier and we were talking about uh, there's a rural outreach group. So, you know, we, we know that where those centers are, are predominantly where there are bigger cities, but there's lots of the U.S. there that's not covered. And how do we get education out to those rural areas? So, um, and, you know, somebody said the quote is, you know, I've never heard of this. I don't know what pulmonary fibrosis is. And that was one of the survey questions we asked, too, is was that frustrating when you told people what you had that they had no idea what, what it was? If you tell somebody you have lung cancer, they know what that is. Or you tell somebody you have even COPD, they've heard of that. So, um, so anyway, we're, we're hoping this will improve things as far as getting people referred earlier and getting diagnosed quickly. And I think that may be my last slide. Um, so those of you who are on social media, we are active, obviously, I only do Facebook, that's about, you know, that's about the, the level I can do. But if you're a Twitter person, you wanna tweet, um, people have been tweeting uh, activities from the meeting. Um, obviously, um, Instagram is uh, way too old for that, my kids do that, but, uh, and then uh, lastly is on, on LinkedIn, you'll see a lot of things. So um, I, all I would say is I would encourage you all to look at the PFF website. Uh, you guys have made the first step by being here. Uh, I, I hopefully, all the resources that you could think about will be there. And the other thing I would really like when I go out to meet with, with patients is what else can we do, what can we produce that is needed? Um, you know, again, like the oxygen book or these tear-off sheets around other disorders other than idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So please reach out to any of us uh, with ideas and suggestions and let us know what we can do to help. So, so thank you guys. I think we're a little early, so thanks.